From Hollywood, it's time now for Bob Bailey as... Johnny Dollar. Guess who, Johnny? Lou. Lou Tang. When they told me you had called, my heart jumped and beat faster. It has been a long time. Too long. Hey, look, I want to see you, Lou. Where are you? They only gave me a phone number. It's a waterfront bar, foot of Drum Street, Sailor's Hangout. Then I'll call a taxi. No, Bobby. wait there. I've got a drunk on my hands. Well, get rid of him. Or of her. Can't do it, honey. This is a valuable drunk. You wait. I'll get there as soon as I can. And look, will you do me a favor, Lou? Anything you want, Johnny. Uh, well, there's a man named Benny Wong. I think he's been hiding out in Chinatown for the last two days. Can you find him for me? So that is why you're here. The sinking of the Marley K. That's right, Lou. Too bad, Johnny. I'm sorry to hear that. Awfully sorry. <laughs> Tonight and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. From Special Investigator Johnny Dollar, location San Francisco, to the Home Office Marine and Maritime Casualty Limited, Hartford, Connecticut. Assignment, the Molly K matter. Expense account continued. Item five, eleven dollars even. Drinks. Consumed by one Josiah Hawkins, able-bodied seaman. Last berth, ship's carpenter on the freighter Molly K. And Hawkins was scared. Scared half to death. So the fear worked against the liquor, and the drinks weren't doing much good. Who was you talking to on the phone? A friend. You say anything about me? About me being with you? Nope. How about another drink, Mr. Hawkins? I had enough. What's the name of your friend, Mr. Dollar? Oh, you wouldn't know her. Just a girl I know here in town. No, a girl. Mr. Hawkins, did Bill Mack have a girl? Yes, he got himself engaged to a girl. I know what you're aiming at, Mr. Dollar. You're trying to play on my sympathy. He was your friend. That he was. One of the best. And now he's dead. Drowned in the Pacific when the Molly Kay went down. Whoever sank her is responsible for his death. You can help me if you would. It wouldn't bring him back. And I gotta think of myself. You're in more danger before you talk than you'd be afterwards. The whole idea is to keep you from talking. Huh? Sure, there's sense in that, all right. Somebody shot at you out there on the docks. Tried to kill you. You'll never be safe as long as they're running loose. Well, Mr. Hawkins. The Molly K was sunk deliberate. We're sure of that. All of us that was aboard her. Things just wasn't right even before it happened. What things? Well, that fire, for one, ten days ago, the first time we started out for Yokohama. Bill Mack was the one that discovered it. Did Mack think the fire had been set? That he did. He told the captain that. And you know what happened, Mr. Dollar? What happened? Captain Brawley knocked him down the bridge ladder. Told him to keep his mouth shut and not go around spreading wild rumors. All right. The second time you sailed, what happened? Well, as soon as we cleared the gate and headed out to sea, Bill and me was on watch. He had me cover for him while he sneaked down in the hold to see what he could find out. He still hadn't come back when it happened. I think you was right, Mr. Dollar, what what you said at the hearing. What do you mean? We didn't hit no derelict. An explosion, that's what it was. In the bottom of the forward hold somewhere. I was on the bow deck right above it when it happened. What about that Chinese steward? The one who got ashore and then disappeared? Did you notice anything special about him? Benny Wong? Yeah. No. We was only a couple of hours out of port. I don't even remember seeing him. One thing, though, that seemed kind of funny at the time. What was that? The first mate done all the hiring for this trip, same as always, just one exception. Benny Wong was hired on by Captain Brawley himself. Uh Uh-huh. And something else, Mr. Dollar, about Bill Mack being drowned. He was wrong about that. Bill Mack is alive? No. No, he was dead before the Molly Kay ever sunk. What? 
I went looking for him as soon as it happened. And I found him down on the lower boat deck, lying in a pool of blood. Somebody cut his throat. I'll have another drink now. I sat there looking at him across the table, not saying anything. There was nothing I could say. Bill Mack had been his friend. I thought over what he just told me, tried to fit it in with what I already knew. It didn't add up to an answer yet. Not quite. But it was close. And it was getting closer all the time. Mr. Dollar, it's him. Huh? Captain Brawley over there. He just come in. Yeah, he's seen us too. He's coming over this way. I got to get out of here. Sit down, Mr. Hawkins. He won't start anything. You don't know him. You don't know how he is when he gets mad. No, but it looks like I'm going to find out. Well, Hawkins, seems like you're not very particular about the company you keep. Neither am I, Captain. Pull up a chair. What are you up to, Dollar? Offering him a bribe to testify against me? Don't need to. There's enough against you already. Yeah, there will be, more than likely, when you and them smart company lawyers get through. You insurance people are all alike. You're right there to collect when it's due you, but you squirm when it comes to paying off. Well, now, that depends on the circumstances, Captain, and in this case, well, I wouldn't go spending that money yet if I were you. That's what you've been telling them, huh? When I've got anything to tell, I'll tell it to the courts. Yeah, along with anybody else you can turn against me. Like my own daughter, for instance. She even sneaked around and tried to turn her against me. Not that that took much doing. And Dean Sutton, owner of the cargo. But there's a limit to what a man will take, Dollar. And I took enough already. Now, you better quit pushing me. I'm warning you. I am. Well, take your warning and stick it where it'll do the most good. You've been trying to block every attempt I've made to get to the bottom of this thing. You've dragged your feet every step of the way deliberately. Dollar, nobody talks to me like that. Then it's time somebody did. I think you're in this thing right up to your big fat neck. And if you are, I'm going to pin it on you. Not just for swindling. If you were behind the sinking of the Molly Kay, I'm going to see to it that you stand trial for murder, too. I warned you once. Now, Mr. Dollar. Oh, no. oh, all right, Captain. Learn it the hard way. Watch out. He's grabbing the bottle. No. Come and get it, Dollar. Sorry, the party's over right now. You better get out of here, Hawkins. He's not going to feel very friendly when he comes to. You're the only man I ever seen stand up to him, Mr. Dollar. There was one other one, Bill Mack. I left Captain Brawley lying there on the floor. They were throwing water on him when I walked out. I hadn't wanted the fight, but there'd been no choice. And it had given me one new fact to fit in. The captain's coat fell open when he hit the floor. And I saw he was packing a gun. Expense account, item six, 80 cents. A taxi fare to Chinatown and a rendezvous with Lu Tang. Shanghai Lu. A strange woman, this one. Wise, shrewd, and alert. Hard and tough when she feels that way. Soft as a kitten when she feels that way. Her nationality, history, age, nothing certain about any of that. But there's one thing that is certain. She's the most beautiful woman I've ever known. It is good to see you, Johnny. How long has it been? Last year, Lou, in Paris. How could you forget? I didn't forget. I only wanted to see if you had. Kiss me, Johnny. Oh, oh. <clears throat> I uh, came here to talk business. Oh, business. I don't feel like talking business. Simmer down, baby. Let's get married. All right. But first, when? let's uh, tomorrow. Now, if Why you... not tonight? It's too late. We'd have to wake somebody up. Always problems, reasons. I don't think you even want to marry me. Sure I do. I've been mad, too, for years. Then why didn't you in Paris? Lo, it's no time to go into that again. Look, I'm on a case, a rough one. And it's just possible that you may be mixed up in it. Johnny... I did not sink the Molly case, so there you are. That takes care of the business. Let's get married. Will you sit back down there? That does not take care of the business. What more do you want to know? Several things. Benny Wong, for instance. That man you asked me about? Yeah, they said he went down with the Molly K, but I found out different from one of the crew. I have not found Benny yet, but I have people looking, so why don't you and I... Lou, I've known you too long. You're not fooling me. Fooling you? The patter is good, but it's not covering the fact that you're bothered. 
You've always bothered me, Johnny. That's not it. How do you figure in this thing, Lou? I don't really know what you mean by this thing, Johnny. You had a pretty heavy stake in the Molly K. A $100,000 mortgage loaned to Captain Brawley. A sound business deal, that's all. I have investments in many ships that sail out of San Francisco. Ah, and of course the investment was covered by insurance. Naturally. I made sure of that before I advanced the loan. Don't let the soft brown eyes fool you, Johnny. I'm a hard-headed businesswoman. Yeah, I know. It was a business deal, nothing else. It showed every chance of being a profitable voyage. He was carrying a cargo of wheat. The Tokyo grain market has been advancing steadily for three months. As to what happened, I don't know anything about it. I don't understand it. That's straight, Johnny. That's all I know. What about this fellow, Dean Sutton? Do you know him, Lou? I've met him. I understand he's engaged to Captain Brawley, daughter. But beyond the... Pardon me a moment. I'll see who it is. The visitor was a young Chinese lad. She stepped outside to talk to him, and I lit a cigarette and waited for her. I thought over what she'd said, tried to see behind it, and to decide whether to believe it or not. Lu Tang was not a person you could push. I stood up when she came back into the room. You're not leaving, Johnny. Yeah, I think I'd better. But you'll see me tomorrow? You know I will. What if I were mixed up in this? Would you send me to jail? You know the answer. Yes. And you're the only man I know who would. I'd be gentle about it, though. I think you really would. You're sweet, Johnny. Awfully sweet. I'm a doll. I've made up my mind to take no part in this, to stay completely out of it. But I'm going to tell you something. What do you mean? That man who just came to the door, I've had him out looking for Benny Wong. Has he found him? Not yet. But he's found out something about him. Johnny, if the Mali K was sunk on purpose, how do you think it was done? By an explosion in the bottom of the fort hold. Hmm. Benny Wong was a demolition sergeant during World War II. He's rather well known as an expert on explosives. Now, here's our star, Bob Bailey, to tell you about tomorrow's episode of this story. Thanks. Tomorrow night, a double cross, a double play, and a lovely girl forces the jealous sea to give up its dead. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by Les Crutchfield, the entire production is under the direction of Jack Johnstone. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Roy Rowan speaking. You've been listening to the OTR Gold Network. Find more classic radio at otrgold.com.